Uh, hey, hey, hey. Why I don't care about oh, social media anymore. It's a funny and ironic thing where I feel like I'm, my content's better because I just don't care as much. I don't know. Maybe it's not as better. It's good. Maybe it sucks. But I don't, I don't care about polishing my videos or editing or doing fancy clickbaity thumbnails or making sure I do my SEO keyword research. I just don't care. Now, there's, there's a lot of reasons for this, and as it goes to everything, it's been like an evolution. Let me see, I'll get this angle so I can lean back. I was doing carnivore diet. I was like, I'm gonna grow my channel. Let's get this shit done. We did it, we grew it. Got to like 8,000 subs. And then I put out a few videos on vaccines. And then like one month, I was, I think I was gaining about 500 subs a month. And then it went down to like 80. That was obviously disheartening, but whatever. It's just, it happens. Not a big deal. I was getting a lot of good comments and people were engaging and stuff. But then I got sick of doing health content because I feel like I'm just talking to the same people. Like I, it's like an echo chamber. But I need to find the standard American diet eaters. They're the ones that eat carnivore. They're the ones that are gonna eat themselves into an early grave. <laughs> They're not finding my videos, you know? So I don't know. I mean, the videos are there. Most of the foundation of carnivore diet, literally free. Go to the archives, find the videos. So I guess I've done my service to the carnivore ecosystem in that way. But it's not just carnivore, it's health. Like I always wanna talk about the principles of health. I always wanna boil things down to the first principles, the basics, because that's how I think as a person. That's why I'm successful. That's why I can think successfully and build an amazing life and do all these things. It's, it's just all first principles thinking. But I was getting sick of talking about that. It's like, hey, go outside, get some sun. Go go move, go exercise. Cook your food at home, not at a restaurant. Eat animal proteins, a lot of them that are healthy. And then if you want some veggies or fruit or whatever the hell ever, if you make it yourself, eat it. It's, it's not rocket science. Now I just, I'm gonna post any video I want whenever I want, I don't care. It is a little bit liberating, but it's not, like a virtue signal or anything or a growth hack. I like if, if YouTube, because I have one strike on my channel right now. I did that Moderna vid video that was up for like a couple hours. Some of you saw that. What's funny about this? Let me tell you about this real, real quick. I post that same channel to my backup channel, Better Human or Better, I don't, I don't know what it's called. I got a backup channel. It used to be called Escaping Fragility. I still love that name. Better Human, I'm trying to keep things uniform. I post a channel to that channel. It gets taken down, of course, within hours. I appeal it though. And in my appeal, there's two differences between both appeals. My main channel, this channel here, which I guess will be on the other channel too. So this shit gets confusing. Uh, my main Colin Slucker YouTube channel. Yeah, that's what it is. So it'll always be Colin Slucker, it'll be my name. And then I'll do like other channels and other shit if I want to. Uh, mostly because it's fun. I like talking to the camera and YouTube's the big player right now. I hope they fail. I hope YouTube dies and that somebody else comes around that doesn't censor sh and that isn't basically run by a bunch of power hungry, big tech fucking pieces of shit, basically. Uh, on the main channel, my first appeal was all I'm doing in this video, which is about Moderna, is citing publicly available information about a public company. That's it, just reading off facts. And then I added some snarky comment because I was pissed off. I was like, Something to the effect of like, are you in bed with Big Pharma now too? And, or did your Big Pharma or overlords tell you to take us down or like something like that? And so obviously that appeal went to a human and that human is gonna try to protect their job and feel like they're the good guy. So they're gonna deny the appeal. No surprise there, I should have expected that. But then the second video that I put up like a day later, same title, same thumbnail, same file. I appeal and I use the same first line, but I keep out the second line, right? So. My appeal was, all I'm doing in this video is citing publicly available information about a public company. That's it. That, that's, that, that was the entire video. Uh, that got reinstated, surprisingly, right? To whoever's credit I, I, I owe to whatever human made that decision. Thank you, human. Like there's maybe some hope in your organization. But... I've also been thinking about social media in general, Instagram, this, whatever. Yeah, like these tools can be amazing for helping educate people and reaching people and interacting with people. I've met a lot of amazing people on social media. I've had a lot of amazing podcasts and guests on and met people in real life through it. 
I mean, I have, I have long-term relationships that I will probably cultivate for the rest of my life through social media, right? Like there's value there. And funny enough, I hated Twitter for years and I was very anti-Twitter. Now I love Twitter, but I'm using it in a very certain way. So I think if I would've gotten Twitter five years ago or 10 years ago, it would've been very bad. So I'm glad I kind of came to Twitter in a very roundabout way now that I have a mitigation strategy for using it. I don't follow politics. Like I don't, I try to not get into flame wars or anything like that. I, I tend to like not reply to tweets. So I'll, I'll reply to something and then just move on. Sometimes it gets sucked into a discussion. Usually not a good idea, but I have a pretty good strategy for that. Instagram, for a while I wanted to grow it. And I got it a little bit. I got like 14,000 subs or whatever. Uh, and I've just become more and more I feel like I'm, it's, it's fake. I feel like I'm a dancing monkey, right? Where if I try to, if I post something, I gotta consider how it's gonna perform in the feed, what people like, what they don't like. I want more likes, comments, whatever. I literally don't give a shit anymore and I'm glad. I post whatever I want, whenever I want. Social media, things like YouTube, Instagram. Uh, I'm using these because I want to say something and that's it. Like I don't, need to do anything beyond that. I say something, I post it, I don't care about anything else. I used to have the perfectionist perspective where I wanted to like edit this video perfectly, do perfect sound, light, all this. I literally now just hit record and I, and I post it. What's funny is like, I actually enjoy social media more now that I don't care as much. It's like strange dichotomy. I think dichotomy is a word. I keep wanting to use that word. I only, if you ask me to find dichotomy, I couldn't actually define the word, but I think I'm using it the right way. Maybe it's a paradox, maybe it's a dichotomy. Maybe those are the same thing, depending on the, the context. I don't fucking know, whatever. It's more fun to do social media when you don't care. So that's what this is now for me. Recording a video right now, which I enjoy. It's like a form of therapy. It's a form of consolidating my thoughts, becoming a better speaker. I'm working on my speech. I'm working on not saying like and um and filler words. I'm working on pausing. So I wanna do this. And then one day I'll do a TED talk or just any talk, whatever. So that's why if you've been following the channel for a while, I just like, it's been sporadic and whatever. And yeah, that's why. Uh, I hope you stick around though, because I think you'll still get value out of what I have to say. I have a lot to say. And generally, what I have to say is based on years of experience. But also, it's like, like, who cares, you know? Like, I'm not a guru. And even if every single point I make in a video is perfect, or it's only 50% perfect, if only something in a video is 10% right, and you get value out of 10%, then ignore the 90%. Who cares? Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what, like, what I'm trying to prove there, but I will keep putting out videos. They will be on whatever I want and whatever style I want. I'll probably curse at times, whereas before I was trying to not do that. I don't care anymore, right? I'm being my true, real self. And I actually enjoy, you know, those of you that are like the audience and follow along. I mean, you're not like the audience. I enjoy the audience that follows along and that comments and I see the same names popping up in the comments and things like that. I enjoy you. I appreciate you. So even right there, I'm not gonna edit out that sentence, even though it's like grammatically shit. <laughs> when I really enjoy making these videos and doing this is actually when I can just talk with you like this right now, like just be real. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm, I'm in my backyard in Austin, Texas. Uh, the sun came out today. It's beautiful. I was at the park. Got my first early morning work session in. Did a podcast for The Better Man. That's coming out soon. Better Man podcast. You can get on the newsletter and the pre-launch list over at more, uh, morebettermen.com. I'm excited about that because I can be really, really raw and real and truthful in that. The Better Human podcast. Still kicking along. Used to be called The Ancestral Mind. Rebranded it to Better Human. I'm going to keep doing that. That's more about personal growth, development, mindset. I do solo shows. I have people on. It's a mix of everything. You can get that over Colin.coach. And if there's anything that I can record about or talk about or you're interested in, aside from like politics or current current stuff, I, I pretty much only do those if I really feel the need to do it. And I try to, you know, not feel the need to do those ever, if at all possible.
but uh, yeah, thank you for whoever voted for the current administration. Thank you for that the, the you know the forty percent cap gains are going for right now. Like it's just unbelievable. People just don't even they 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 don't even know. But you know what? See, I gotta resist it. I don't want to go there. I don't want to talk about how, how rising raising capital gains or just raising taxes in general actually results in in less net tax revenue. We've seen it in states, cities, federally. We have the data. We know this. People move elsewhere. They move their capital somewhere else. They do something else. They go to different places. It's the free market. That's why America's had an advantage because they lowered cap gains to pretty much one of the lowest places on the planet. And so money flows in. When you rise cap gains, what happens? Money flows out. You want to give China the edge? Raise cap gains. You want to give any other country on the planet the edge? Rise, raise cap gains. <laughs> it's, I'm telling you, the people that are in government and politics and then the people that blindly just like gobble up their bullshit, they are all... Uh, what's the word? Not in touch with reality. No understanding whatsoever of history, of free markets, of economics. They're in a self-created echo chamber like bubble of stupidity. Pretty much. That's what it is. Yep. And every time I found myself, I mean, in 2020 I was, I felt into politics a little bit. And I was paying too much attention. And I popped my own bubble because I realized that it was toxic, a waste of time, wasn't help me, helping me pursue my mission. I got out, right? And I understand if you're in there. I understand if you're in there now and you're watching the screen and you feel like you got to yell at the screen and be mad because either you disagree with what they're saying and you, and you use it as a way to like reinforce your identity as counter to them. Or if you're joining them and then you're, whoever they're yelling at, you're yelling at the same person, if that makes any sense. Either way, you are in a bubble of stupidity and you need to get out of it. It doesn't mean you're a stupid person. You're actually probably a smart person, but you need to get out of that bubble of stupidity, right? Which is a self-imposed bubble, right? That's, I know I'm like rambling, now we're 20, 12 minutes, but whatever, I do what I want. So I did a post last week about stupid people. Now I genuinely believe that 99% of humanity has the intellect, the ability, genetically, to not be stupid. So what makes them stupid? Choice. Most of the time, it's an unknowing choice they're making. The people they're around, the books they're reading or whatever, I mean, there are some bad books, but generally books are a good thing. The political ideologies and the narratives that they're just letting infect their brain like parasites. And their inability to think for themselves, one, to think critically, two, and to challenge their own rigid dogmas and beliefs three yeah that is being stupid but it's also a choice so if you're being stupid you're probably not stupid you're not like actually a mongolian idiot like as clinically psychology would would diagnose you but you are choosing to act stupid and be stupid so just stop that advice also applies to pretty much everything in life. If you're getting hung up on shit, if you're blaming people or blaming yourself or just otherwise acting as a victim, stop. You're being stupid. You're choosing to play the victim. You're choosing to, to label things a certain way and have judgments in a certain way that are sapping your happiness, your success, your fulfillment. You're being stupid, so stop. Don't be stupid.